Hello out there to all you legendary Big Footy Blues podcast listeners. I'm ODN and I hope to take you on a journey tonight. But I'm not alone. Uh, no, it's one in, all in around here. Joining me tonight is our resident tech head, music man and all-round nice guy, Shandog. Hey, Shandog. Hello. Our humble fan favourite who is our sense's biggest nightmare, Mebby. <laughs> Hello. Hello. And the ever-present, omnipresent and prolific HBF. Good evening, bitches. <laughs> and our reigning poster of the year, bored funny man. He knows more about football than he gives himself credit for. Ferris B. You here, Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I heard he's sick, but I'm here instead. <laughs> uh, folks, this is our second podcast of the year. The first being just after our uh, first NAB challenge match against the Hawks. So a little bit to talk about um, since then. It's been about uh, two or three weeks, um, and we played two NAB Challenge matches, one against uh, somebody you don't remember, and we played the Swans last last Friday. Look, rather than get too far into the results, because as we know, results don't matter, um, needless to say, we've lost all of our NAB Challenge matches, but we've done a, we've done a few things. We've worked with rotations and fitness, and uh, we switched our sides around, and we played a pretty solid side, and then we played a uh, very inexperienced side, and then we've now we've gone and played a, you know, probably... A good pointer towards our round one side. Um, do you, who, who wants to start by just talking about uh, what they've taken out of those matches, or you know what match they they, they really saw our game plan and the way we're heading this year? Um, the, the the main thing that I noticed was um, the way that we wanted to keep bringing the ball um, back into the centre, and that that was probably the reason that there were so many turnovers where we got scored against. I don't think from memory there was too many occasions, and especially if you if you think about it more so NAB 3 where we've had a couple of hit outs and it's, and it's, you know, we should be getting pretty good by that stage as well. Um, most of the errors that we made that resulted in goals was just trying to kick something a little bit too attacking into the middle and we missed the kick or something like that and it goes back over everyone's head. Um, the, the defensive press we were doing too, I really liked it. It was really good. Got caught out a couple of times with them getting clear and kicking the ball over the back to Buddy or whatnot, and that was a bit frustrating, but that's going to take a while to, to perfect. So um, overall, when it comes to the game plan and stuff, I think it looked a lot better, even though the execution was probably lacking a little bit. So it's going to be... I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how much it improves over the year. Is that our base? I mean, they're that game plan, so we, we're going to kick back into the corridor. I remember um, Geelong in their heyday were doing something similar. Um, they were looking for opportunities to go back in the corridor wherever possible. And it, we, don't, we, we don't have the skill level for it right now, but if we set that up as our game plan going forward, we get, it seems like we're going to get burnt a lot from it this year and maybe a little bit next year. But as the skills improve and as we change our personnel that we're going to get players that fit that game plan. So at least we know what we're looking to do for the next couple of years. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. The, uh, the one thing that I took from the game, and look, being there, you, you definitely miss sort of stuff from when you watch on TV, but certainly in that second quarter against the Swans, when they got a bit of a run on, I was sort of mentally sort of trying to keep track, and I think at least 50% probably more of their uh, goal goals were as a, as a result of a direct turnover from us, be it a, you know, a disposal error or something like that. So obviously there's still some work to go in that area. And once we actually tidied that up, we were actually reasonably competitive with Sydney. So definitely agree with Shan. If we can just limit those turnovers and, um, you know, resulting scoring shots, you know, I think uh, we, we could come quite a long way this year with this um, game plan under Bolton. The, the one thing that stood out for me and, and probably wasn't much of a surprise, I think that the general game plan looked pretty good. I agree with the sort of, you know, kicking towards the middle. Where it all seemed to fall down was just um, in the forward line. I mean, not necessarily delivery 
to the forward line, part of it. But, um, you know, the mids look good, and, and as per last year, clearances look good, and, and we seem to swarm, and that we had numbers, and we had overlapping players. So it, it all looked really good in the middle of the ground, and then it just turned to um, insert expletive here, um, you know, inside 50, really. So I... I I think a lot of us, and, and and I definitely think that the forward line is, is our major weakness, and it, it sort of played out for me in the games. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder how much um, the poor delivery to our 50s, into the 50 that we keep talking about, is really the mid's fault, and how, whether maybe we've underestimated the importance of having forwards who lead properly and position themselves well as, as well. Um, just speaking of our forward line being a mess... Um, who do we think has played them? It doesn't seem to me that anybody's actually put their hand up to uh, to be in that forward line, but obviously we've got to play one. Um, I did. I wrote them a letter, but they haven't responded. <laughs> so who, who do we think is going to be in that, um, in the forward line come round one? I think the um, uh, I definitely there's no form to speak of um, in the forward line. I think you have to assume that um, Levi's a lock. I think Andrew Walker is a lock. Um, and every it will be on a half forward flank that's two tall, so two talls and a, and a sort of medium you'd need um after that it's all up in the air um you know probably a small someone lamb right galucci well probably not at this stage but um maybe lamb and then maybe one one more player and then just just mids from there i guess that is not an inspiring combination of people <laughs> no no it's not that's what we have it's not, all we have. Not a lot of intensity in that lot at the moment. Not from that that challenge. And I know you don't have to show all your intensity in that challenge, but you know Bolton's very big on um, playing the way you train. Uh, Walker was like not good at all. Um, Casbolt might have been triple teamed at some stages, but still, like he's going to have to learn how to get over that at some point. Copy it, um, he? I mean, far out. What are we supposed to do? Yeah, I mean, run, run, running off that, I mean, the name that jumps out to me, you know, potentially is Kerno. Um, now, I, I'd prefer not to play him this early, but it seems like he's got energy, he's busy, he runs around, he sort of uh, maybe not crashes into packs, but sort of makes his presence felt. And and uh, if we don't have a lot of industrious sort of effort there, he might um, give it a bit of impetus. What do we do with Cruiser? Just uh, throwing it out there, do we... Do we play him forward against Richmond and hope that sort of Phillips can uh, sort of go with Marrick, or do we play him in the ruck and see what Phillips can do up forward? I'm sort of thinking we play Cruiser in the ruck and maybe yeah. down forward. Is it? I'd, I'd be happy to never see Cruiser play more than a handful of minutes a game up forward. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be closer to fifty-fifty in the ruck and twenty-five percent of the game um, each uh, forward, and maybe twenty-five percent on the pine, something like that along that line. Um, Phillips, Phillips can take it. He, he gets a good run at the ball, so he can play forward a little bit. Um, he, he's, he's not that bad. He's not as bad as say, you know, if, if we had had uh, Warnock up there, for example. Um, so he's going to create a contest, and I think that's all we can hope for from our tall forwards at the moment. Um, Levi is going to get. Uh, uh, double and triple teamed because he's the one that's got the the, the hands and usually from clunk and mark. Um, and the others are just going to be uh, bringing the ball to ground. So it's just a matter of you know, and we don't even have small forwards to capitalise on that either. So it's, it's going to be it's, it's going to be difficult. We're going to we're probably going to have to play play um, rest some of our good mids, and I can I can see the likes of Mark Murphy resting up forward quite a lot. And then maybe he will anyway because he hasn't had much of a preseason, so um, it might be a good idea to um, to rest Murph up forward for half the game, sort of thing. I think it's, it's so important that um, like Jack or um, uh, Kerno, um, Charlie Kerno, really uh, come on this year to be able to play as that second tall forward, just so that we've got someone else other than um, Casbolt to try and take a mark up there. Yeah, I mean, I was hoping. Would, 
at the end of last year and Henderson went and everything, and I, I sort of thought, well, we'll just we'll just do a mobile forward line. We'll have Walker and Everett up there, and you know, we'll we'll have better meds and they'll deliver the ball better inside fifty. And I don't think that's the way that well, it's certainly not the way the NAB Challenge has um, panned out. We've sort of been a bit of an arm wrestle, and we haven't had a lot of space to work in. Uh, maybe on the bigger grounds on the MCG, maybe we'll we'll have you know more of a chance to um, get our forwards one out, you know, on the lead, but. I, I don't know. Kuno's a good one for actually getting away from his man. You always see him upfield, and he's always got a fair break. So he's got a good tank. He just runs and runs and runs. Um, so he, he could be an option to sort of make multiple leads and double back because of that tank. Um, and look, at this stage, I don't know. I know they've been working heavily with Jackson in the off-season, but um, he hasn't played in the NAB Challenge. He's, uh, he's just played one VFL game. Um, where he didn't do much up forward, but uh, went back for a half and did okay in defence. So he would only be up forward as a, um, again, just to bring the ball to ground rather than a, a bona fide target, just to stop the, the tall Richmond defenders outmarking us. So, uh, look, I at this stage, they can put anybody up there, and I'm not, I'm not going to question it because... If really? Yeah, well, oh, that, no, no, that's, on the bench. that's not a bad. That's not a bad. It's not actually a bad ploy. Um, Rowie has been has been a forward. Um, he was a forward in the in, you know, forward ruckman in the sample. Um, so um, it, it is the role he can do. He he can take a good mark. I think he's become a bit defensive minded. So whether he can switch back there, but if you're going to put somebody up there just to provide a tall target and bring the ball to ground, then Rowie's as good as anybody. <laughs> You know? I, I agree, and he's, he's also been a bit messy up back recently, um, and so you, you move him up forward, I agree, presents a, a target, can take a grab, and then uh, doesn't do as much damage on, on the disposal. Well, that's as well. it, and if our defence is under pressure, then he can go back. So, you know, it's just you having that... If you, if you get somebody with a little bit of versatility that can go up either end, um, and they can say, you know, they can switch back if you're in trouble, then that's always handy to have. Um, I'm... I'm don't want to really use the, the term swingman because he's not that, and the last swingman didn't really work out too well for us. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's a bit of a wank word these days in our book. But um, yeah, it's 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 covering all bases. So if you can keep your side versatile enough, um, because otherwise it's you're, you're waiting, you're looking at the likes of Simon White maybe taking Rowie's spot, um, which means if something goes wrong, then Weedering is. One of your main men, and he's a little bit, um, you know, it's, he's still inexperienced when it comes to the. Uh, to, well, he hasn't had played a home and away game and that challenge. We don't know if he's going to bring the same out or he's going to be more pressure and it's going to be a bit tougher to work into. So you probably don't want to throw him to the wolves straight off. I'm going to fly the flag for Rowie here, and of course and you are. Massive declaration is that he has been the biggest victim of our poor recruiting and trading because if we had a genuine. Um, big key defender, then he'd be up forward kicking 40 goals a year, and we'd be saying, "Who's Fev?" and no. get me Rowie's jumper on my back. And none of that is true. No, I, think, I think that I think I think his declaration should have been he's just taken half a bottle of meds before he joined us. Yeah, like uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Asada is not testing me. Right. <laughs> Rowie has a good story, but I think he's reached his ceiling. In the back line, I definitely agree. I think he could actually be far more useful to us as a forward now. I mean, I was only kidding with Lightship before, but honestly, well, I think he'd do it better. Useful. So at this stage, useful. No we use would, whatsoever. We, we would. I would settle for useful. Hmm. Yeah. And useful is all we want at this stage. I mean, realistically, he's probably not going to be at the club all that much longer once the the people we start picking and trading through in the, over the like last year and the next couple of years start coming through. So, you know, useful for now is probably enough. Mm. How about we go through some names, folks, and what we what we've seen from uh, certain players in the um, in the NAB Challenge? Um, probably been a few polarising ones, isn't there? Yeah, it's been seen. so. Either way, there's some, there's some neg- positives and negatives as to how we think they're gone. But just a, just a quick word from you know maybe one one or two of you on certain players. They um, uh, look, we'll still you know obviously we'll st- I think we'll start with Jacob Weedering. Yeah, what a what a what a way to start your career at Carlton. Um, two very good games against Essendon and uh, Sydney, and uh, I can't remember when he. I think it was in the third quarter. He may have lined up on Franklin from from memory and. Uh, sort of got a nice spoil in on that wing, the the city side wing, and just his composure 
for an 18 year old is unbelievable. I don't know if I've seen a, a kid come through the system with this much composure at such an early stage. So uh, he's an absolute lock for round one and uh, get to showcase his talents on a very big stage. He, know, he knows when to run. He knows when to, to roll the dice, doesn't he? I've said it a few times on the on the boards, but he's an, he's a Harry Taylor clone, and he he really is. He the, the only difference is he kicks with his right foot. That's about the only difference. The way he reads the ball and directs traffic down back already, he's an amazing player. He's going to be someone that will well and truly love to watch over the next few years. It doesn't seem like he just plays like Harry Taylor. It seems like he plays like Harry Taylor played after fifty games. Yeah, yeah, and the point. That's kind of how I'm comparing him. Like and, 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 and Harry Taylor was a mature age recruit as well. So, <laughs> um, Sam Kerridge. Yes. <laughs> I love Kerridge. Three goals and a half. If he can keep that sort of thing happening, then he will be a very excellent pickup for us. I think Menzel who. Yeah, I was about to say that. What do we think of, yeah, of Menzel now? Like, so I mean, we got we got ridiculed for that trade. And, I mean, uh, who's laughing now? Well, it wasn't just a carriage for Menzel either. We got 28, which we picked up four players with. So, you know, anything they could, they could still be anything. So, uh, very astute. Um, and it's, it's sort of like, it's just one of those missing ingredients. Even though you might look on pure talent and go, oh, Menzel's stacked with talent. But in a side that needs to, needs to build based on hard work and attitude, um, carriage is just, you know, the right man at the right time. Yeah, and I, I think... can't wait to play North Melbourne just quietly. <laughs> <laughs> he almost seems like a bit of an upgrade on Bell, to be honest with you, because his disposal is a little bit better. Not not fantastically better, but it, it is a bit better than Bell's. But he still plays with that same sort of explosiveness. Like, he he just runs through three or four people trying to pick up a contested ball and somehow manages to bust through on the other side. It's really I, impressive. 81% efficiency um, and almost half his... Uh, half, half his possessions were contested, so that's that's not a bad effort mm. against Sydney, so uh, might have been a bit of a ring rust the week before, but uh, he, he took that, uh, he kicked that, that early goal where he uh, floated across the, the, the top of the square and kicked the goal and ran on and into the open goal and kicked it and I remember him doing um, watching back on his highlights against North Melbourne, doing something similar in that last quarter um, so, you know, he, he's, he's still got it and that's, and that's certainly something that um, he, he seems to do, you know, fairly naturally. Yeah, so. definitely rely on him to kick a goal or two. Yeah, yeah, and speaking of goal-kicking mids, um, Nick Graham. Yes! <laughs> How good is it to see him get a chance? Like, far out, he's bossing it. He's just getting better every single quarter he plays. Love him. And I'm loving seeing people on the boards too going, you know, I was a bit iffy about him, but geez, he swayed me already. So yeah. it's really good. He's getting a lot of support from everyone on, on Big Footy and, and uh, obviously the the uh, coaches and stuff too, so it's really good to see. It's yeah. good to see people finally seeing what those of us who actually get to go to VFL games saw and what we were saying um, when we couldn't believe why Mick wouldn't give him a proper chance. Like I'm, I'm glad everybody's finally getting um, to witness it. Mm. Absolutely. Does anybody else think that Ed Curdo has gone up a cog? Uh, I haven't noticed any real clangers from him, so in that regard, probably. Yeah. I, I'm thinking his disposal's better, and he he, he, um, he kicked a beautiful goal in one of those games, and he did uh, too. Yeah, and, and and yeah, he's just uh, I don't know. He just seems to uh, maybe maybe it's the leadership group thing. Maybe maybe some sibling rivalry. Possibly. Maybe, oh, yeah. oh, I've got to be better than my brother. Kind Showing the way. Um, uh, while we're, while we're espousing the positives, blame Bokers. Oh, I mean, that, I don't even care about the moustache. Yeah, oh, I still care about it. I still care about it. I must admit. I kind of like it. I love that mustache. Yeah, he, he pulls it off. I'll give him that, and he oh, can play football. So, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, yeah, he's another one. I think he's going from um, he's he's improving the more you see him out there. It's amazing what a proper full preseason can do. Um, yeah, I like him, and I know HBF and Thylacine, they were, well, Thylacine started off by giving him some really unfair criticism at the start of last week, and by the end of it, he'd been turned around, so well done, Blaine. All right, he's only, uh, he only played one game, or sorry, he only played half a game out of the whole Nets challenge. Um, HBF, do you want to run through some stats for Patrick Cripps for us from the Sydney game? 
Oh, you put me on the spot here. I actually don't have them at hand. But he Shane, had, um, you did not print them out in 24 papers. touches. 24 <laughs> touches, one goal. I noticed off the top of my head. Um, 12, 16 contested, 35 contested position. Yeah. I think what that proves is that Shandog is a bigger fan of Crips than HBN. <laughs> yeah. 16, 16 contested possessions, 9 clearances. Um, oh, yeah, 53% game time. Four tackles, 53% game time. That's a massive effort. Um, what a beast. Um, I've, I've, just, I've just lost sound for uh, about five minutes, but I just had 53% game time, six, 16 contested possessions. It's, it's got to be Crips. It's got to be yeah. God, right? It yep. had to be you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what a good time to rejoin the conversation. I, I tell you what, though, what, what I'm particularly happy about is not the fact, that, I mean, yeah, Cripps is going to, he just seems to know where the ball's going to go all the time, but it's a combination he's worked up with both, both Cruiser and Phillips on occasion, um, tapping it beautifully down to him. So they've really been working on their clearance work with Cripps particularly, and he is, he, he's untackleable. You can't tackle him. Um, yes. You cannot keep him. You cannot tackle him with the ball. Um, it, it, it's it's a wonder to, to behold. And remember, guys, when um, when Anthony Kudafides had got injured and he came back and he became an inside mid, he was able to sort of keep his arms free above the rest of them with his athleticism and strength. Well, I mean, the, even even Kuda as an inside mid has nothing on Crips. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no, no, cr- no cr- early Cuda was a totally different type of player, but he had to reinvent himself because of all the injuries. So, so the first potty, you, you, it was like, Courage <laughs> is the next judge, so this one, the Crips, is better than Cuda. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I feel really uncomfortable right now. I mean, I mean let, let's, let's forget for a second that Cuda, I think, had the most contested possessions in a game of football at one stage, but once he did reinvent himself... but. Anyway, let, let, putting Cooter aside, I mean, I've definitely noticed the the combination, particularly with Cruiser and 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 late last year, it he sort of uh, Cripps went from getting the ball from underneath the pack to roving a lot more taps and actually getting a bit more space and and running away from um, you know the opposition and, and getting a lot more time. And so to see him run away, he looks um, you know it looks like he's got a bit more toe as well. You give him more space, and it, it's not just the quick handball, which is a sight to behold, but um, you know maybe the opportunity to do more damage with the ball as well. I think he's well, used he, it better by foot too. He did kick a goal. Yeah. yeah. It was a bit unconventional looking, but he got there. It doesn't matter. It went through the two big sticks, and as Stigo Harris says, that's all you need. That's correct. Yeah. Look, I've and been, we need a lot of that. And this is by no, no means another comparison, but... Oh, but <laughs> Cripps, as far as his instincts as how, how to read the bouncing ball in traffic and, 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 and at the, in the right contest of the centre square, um, his instincts and his reaction time to, compared to others is diesel-like. He's not as good as diesel, but it's diesel-like. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I, just want to point I, out, he's so good at everything that Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I, I think basically what we need to do is get the, um, the that Carlton um, team of the century photo, yeah. the painting, and just merge everyone into one player. It's like an eye trick, and you yeah. kind of look at it long enough, a three D thing, and then just Patrick Cripps comes out. I think I think that's how it works. Patrick Cripps killed Godzilla. I don't think Cripps would be happy if he heard all this. I think he'd be really embarrassed and upset about it. He's a very humble person. So I think you should all take it all back. I, I think no, so. we, we, we say it because he'd be too embarrassed to, okay? <laughs> no, we're just, it's, a, it's a community service. Honestly, who would win in a match if it was Carlton's team of the century versus Patrick Cripps? <laughs> um, well, if Cripps misses the goal, who's he going to kick it into? It's all right because he'll, just, he'll, he'll like intercept the kick out and have another shot. It's his oh. own kick out. And they kick it to himself. The only one. Wow, this this isn't going to end badly. No, no. Look, it, stupid idea, Shannon. I, I don't want to mention where it's from yet because we'll talk about that later. But uh, we've we've all seen a snippet where um, 
where Cripsy's asked Juddy um, how to deal with those expectations at such a young age after you've achieved something and gone somewhere, and Juddy said, "Well, that's well, that's kind of what you wanted to happen." So, um, so it's it's an expectation that Cripps would be getting used to um, because it's where mm. he wants to be in his playing career. So he knows that all comes with it because he's been given advice by the wise old wise old sage. Um, We'll leave Crips alone for a moment. We'll come back to that, what I was talking about. But, um, very cryptic of you. <laughs> very, very cryptic. Cryptic. Yeah. yeah <laughs> sorry. You guys, don't step on my gag. <laughs> oh, sorry, was it? <laughs> what the talent, you guys. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Dylan Buckley played in uh, a little bit around half forward um, yeah. against Sydney. And I thought he, you know, some people bagged him out for it. I thought he actually looked quite, quite dangerous. Some people are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean all the events that you guys have just taken. Yeah. Um, he, he tries to make things happen. That's what it is. And sometimes it doesn't come up. But at least he's out there having a friggin' crack and trying to make something out of very little sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he played okay game. Like his his endeavour was great, and I think it's really important to have that out there, especially from a player like Buckley. Yeah, absolutely. And as his board buddy, I concur with that, Shan. <laughs> I, I think, I mean, it's definitely an interesting experiment for me because I think we have a lot more options off halfback flank than yeah. we do up forward. So if he's as good up forward as he is down back, I'd happily move him forward. If you've got Tui, Doc and Simpson on, a, on let's call it, on, an, on a halfback flank, you don't need any, no, any more smalls. Mm. So, and, and we're looking at people like Byrne to come through and yeah. play in there as well. And uh, Yeah, we've got a heap of halfback flankers. And one of the podcasts, so there's far too many. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Um, hey, who right. remembers um, Buckley's first goal, too? Me? Um, yes. Hey, yes. yes. It was beautiful. That's, that's when I knew what love was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Picked um, it up with one hand and kicked, it, kicked a goal. And then... Left foot, too, from like 40 on a snap. Two, two that I'll run together for the last, the last of the positives. I just want a quick quick notation on these two played against Essendon. Uh, certainly we were outnumbered, outgunned against Essendon as far as resting all our starting midfield. But uh, just some initial thoughts of uh, of Harry Mackay and um, Jack Silvani. Um, I'll, I'll take Mackay if you like and maybe maybe you can talk about... <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Look, he, he didn't get a lot of it. He, he took a nice mark and um, kicked a nice goal, so that that'll give him some confidence. Um, I actually did see him play a couple of games last year of under eighteen footy, and he can definitely he can definitely play this kid. So I think um, getting him to the club and letting him develop over the next sort of two to three years, I, I really wouldn't expect much from him, especially with his um, with his injury. But he, he, I really believe he'll get there and. Um, yeah, I think he's definitely one to watch. A bit of a, probably for 2018, I think maybe. A bit of a pack split up by the look of it. He, he has a bit of a launch, and he's not afraid to take a couple of players with him. Yeah, and he's he's got a very nice left foot as well. He he um he got a pretty good technique. That was one thing I did notice from him last year. He's got a got a good technique for a guy that's about 202 or 203 centimeters. So. Um, yeah, I think he'll be very good for us. We just have to nurse him through this year, get him get his injury sorted out, and uh, see if he can play some uh, VFL football uh, later in the year. Yeah, very unlikely he'll get a senior game this year now. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought so at all. Um, and and young Jack. Oh yep. wow! <laughs> um, the emotion that I feel when I see him play, and it wasn't just me; it was everyone around me. Like everyone was just waiting for him to come out. Um, and they kept showing um, flashes of him warming up on the screen outside. Um, and there was one moment where I actually, I know this is going to be hard for you guys to believe, but I embarrassed the absolute shit out of myself when he was going for a mark and I, I forgot where I was and I just screamed out, Sir! And he <laughs> dropped it. Um, and it's like the story of my life. But, um, Maybe he put sauce off mark, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he saw me in the crowd, and then him and Dua got kind of fun. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> it's just to see him out there, and he reminds me so much of his papa. Um, it's just like it's uncanny. It is it's uncanny. Amazing. The way that the way he moves, the way that the head wobble when he hops yeah. head flops side when he runs, with the hands are sort of flopping around, and 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 um, the, the recovery once they hit the ground. 
So yeah. back, back to his feet again, that sort of stuff. That's that's all that's all in the Sylvani James, so it's that's amazing. amazing to watch. I was very yeah. very impressed with his game sense actually. Yeah, um, really good footy brain. People have said that about him, um when we picked him up and, and how he was going in underage comp and all that sort of stuff. But there was a couple of moments there in that game where he's ripped the ball out from inside of a pack at one stage, like had a quick look behind him and fired out a Crips like handball yeah, to, to someone. And, yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, he, a couple of moments like that where we went, the guy can play footy, he's not just a name. So, uh, yeah. yeah, looking forward to see how he, how, how quickly he comes on. He, uh, my favourite <laughs> soft moment was when um, there was a little bit of argy-bargy on the boundary line and he was straight in there. Like, he, is, he was probably the youngest kid out there and definitely one of the smallest. And he didn't give a shit. Him no him. one messes with a sauce, you guys, especially not at Prince's Park. I loved it. All the young guys, when him and Mackay, Mackay laid a handy yeah. tackle and sauce was in there backing him up. That was fantastic. Yeah. That was scary. Your so. free flag fly, sauce. <laughs> one thing I did, just, just before we finish up on Silvani, well, one thing I did notice with him again from last year was that he actually kicks the ball like a midfielder. He was, it was in a championship game down at Geelong and he, he got the ball on, off half back and he, he saw a player um, in the middle of the ground and rather than swinging around onto his left, he actually kicked it with the outside of his right foot and hit him sort of lace out. It was just one of those things that I sort of thought, geez, that, you don't really sort of see that from a, a third tall. Um, so he can, I would actually say he's probably a, a, probably a more competent kicker of the footy than, he, than his old man. So um Definitely something there, and, and he'll he'll be the same as McKay. He'll he'll take at least a couple of years to to get ready. But there's there's definitely some Silvani magic in there for sure. Mm, yeah, oh, oh, I almost forgot from the same match. Um, uh, Andrew Gallucci he might be a little bit of a cult hero. <laughs> I mean, yeah, in a good way. Like I was agreeing <laughs> that, that was a that was a <laughs> snort of agreement. Yeah, <laughs> no, he's got that yeah. makeup. The sort of fans really got. I mean, he gave away a heap of uh, free kicks, and, and he was just and fifties, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he was he was an antagonistic little so and so. Yeah, um, I'm like, I don't even care. I was happy, and he had a bit of a uh, bit of a bit of a swagger about him, um, which you know I hadn't seen the couple of times I saw him train. Um, so you know, I don't know the stat sheets. So I need what he get uh, eleven disposals or something like that, and uh, butchered the ball a little bit. And, yeah. Gave away, well, yeah, he gave away a couple of free kicks, a bit of a 50s win, <laughs> so made them earn it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I liked what I saw of him, um, something to work with for sure. Um, and can I, at risk of extending this out a little bit longer, I just, can I get a couple of thoughts from about Lamb and Wright? Because yeah. I thought they actually contributed quite well to the forward structure and having pressure there, particularly Lamb with his pressure, but Wright was a pretty good link up player as well on the wing. I think there's a place in the team for both of them. I like um, Lamb. I rate him a lot. From I know he made a few um, mistakes on, against Sydney, but who didn't? Um, but I like the, the whole feel of the forward pressure completely was different mm. in in the game against Sydney. So I'd love to see Lamb again for sure. And right, I kept um, forgetting who he was. He's forty six, isn't he? He kind of rem- yeah. reminds me of Allard a little bit. I don't know from the back or something. I kept thinking it was Allard. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Not if he wants his career to go. Yeah. But yeah. Ouch. Yeah. But I, I thought he was pretty good. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. He, they, those two are split a lot of posters, so it'll be very inter- interesting to see what the um, uh, match committee decides to go with, to see what they were, you know, the, the administrators and footy departments thinking about having those two. Lamb, Lamb might have a, little, a fraction more intensity uh, with his tackling pressure and maybe a little bit more mm. toe. Wright is a lot more experienced, so he seems to understand structures a little bit better and he gets a bit more of the pill, so uh, yeah, which way, which way do you go? It would be interesting to see both, but uh, it's just going to depend on the structure because well, Wright can go through the midfield too, can't he? So yeah, maybe maybe that's quite a possibility. If you can, you know, if, you, you, if you're going to have flankers in the side, you want um, mm. you want a lot of them to be able to go through the midfield as well. well they've both been touted as being able to do that. So, but yeah, anyway, um, moving on. No, no, it's also all good. Anybody uh, aside from the aforementioned uh, Rowie, Paul Rowie, that, uh, that that anybody found a real Oh, well, actually, there is one. Oh, oh. Sorry, I did can Oh, I'm not going to open. I'm not even going to say the name. If anybody wants to start talking about them. Daisy Doozy. How does that song go? <laughs> Something like that. Actually. Yeah. Um, How does your garden go? So crazy. Um, yeah. 
was it just a bad one or that it's making some down ones look even worse or is it no <laughs> it's bad I'm well, not, a, not a Thomas apologist or anything but he's actually his game against Hawthorne was actually quite good so maybe he just did have a a bad one against Sydney, like a very, very bad one against Sydney. Um, look, he'll he'll play senior footy this year for sure. Um, just yeah, very disappointing on um, on Friday night. It's to the point where I'm just like groaning every time he's got the ball. I don't want to be groaning when yeah. a senior player has the ball like that. Like going for a talk forty meters out and not making the distance. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I was. Look, I mean, he's obviously missed a lot of football, and and hopefully, um, you know, he gets a bit of game time. And you know, we know somewhere under there he's he's got so much skill. Whether whether that's gone forever or whether it's just waiting to reemerge, don't know. Um, I guess the question is now as well: Where do you play him? Um, I think I think you know we we recruited him as a full time midfielder. He started off injured and we put him in the forward line to, in my opinion, basically hide him a little bit, protect him. Um, do you put him on the half-back where he might get a bit more ball and get involved? Um, do you leave him up forward? Is he, is he on the bench? Does he make the 22? He doesn't play for the VFL. Mm, that's if harsh. He play, if, oh. if he plays senior footy, I, I think we play him as a small forward. Yeah, same. Yeah, he can't, we can't risk him in the back line. No, if you're gonna if he's gonna be down back, he's gonna actually play the percentages a little bit better. Um, I, I think he takes uh, he, he he tries a little bit too, too much flair at different times, and that little dinky side kick uh, when, the, when we were sort of trying to run forward to, that uh, that he barely connected with was was indicative of that. And then you, if you're gonna do that up forward, do little tricks up forward that don't come off, so be it. You know that's what small forwards do. But down if you, if you're sort of running out of the fence, sort of through half back uh, through the mid, midfield, you don't really want to be taking those sort of risks and you certainly don't want your senior players turning the ball over and setting that sort of example for the young guys. Um, so I think he'd have to check his flair a little bit at the door and become a little bit more um, responsible down back uh, or in the midfield. But up forwards, he can do what he wants. We, we certainly, you know, we're crying out for a small forwards. If he's, if he's mm. still if he's still got some tricks and, you know, a couple of times last year he showed he can still do it. Um, you know, potentially that's really where he fits. I think the potential um, of having Thomas and Wright as our two small forwards playing deep, it, it's actually it actually is quite appealing. Um, you know, they they both they both know how to get the footy. They both know where the goals are, which is obviously important. But their defensive pressure is really good, and that's something that I've noticed that opposition teams just seem to be able to waltz the ball out of our forward line. And I think if we have those two down there, plus Lamb, if we can fit him in, um, you know, all of a sudden, once the ball hits the ground, we do have some pressure there. Um, and even, you know, if Kerridge is up there as well. So, um, look, Thomas, to me, if he if he's available, is line ball 22. But if he does play, it just has to be as that defensive small forward. Look, if we can get a goal out of him a week, yeah. there's 20 goals. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, look, it wasn't all, you know, 19, 19 possessions, five clearances, six tackles. He was a second leading tackler for us on the field. So it wasn't all bad. It's just that I guess because he's been, he's already had those question marks with his contract and we not, haven't, got the, haven't got the best out of him yet. You know, we haven't got value for money. A 50, 52, 53% efficiency in a, in a nine claiming. So if you have a real bad game where you make several really glaring errors like that, he is going to cop it more than, say, uh, you know, I, I can remember in the past Juddy having those sort of low efficiency games, you know, um, or, or some of the other big names have, uh, have, have, have turned the ball over quite a lot. Gibbs is one who does the same. He t- turns, tends to turn the ball over a fair bit for somebody with his skill level. They t- tend to get a little bit more slack because of what they've done in the past for us, whereas Thomas still hasn't done that. So we're probably judging him a little bit unfairly based on... You know, what we gave up for him, sort of thing. Look, I do feel sorry for him because he he doesn't go out there wanting to kick like shit. Um, he you know he's obviously trying if he's laying six tackles in a game, and it's not like he's taking short steps or anything like that because I would find that unforgivable. But I mean, when it when it's 
when the game's passed you by, the game's passed you by, and I just don't know if he will ever get to the level that we were hoping when we picked him up. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we'll sort of leave it at that. Um, let's have a let's have, let's have a little ch- bit of a chat about of a, a documentary that uh, showed on Fox Footy. It's on the, up on the Carlton website. Something we sort of all uh, were waiting for for a while. Um, the journey. Um, did everybody watch it for a start? Ferris, I think you said you didn't see it. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, so yeah, I've, yeah he's not a real supporter, I would say. No, no well, I've, got, I've got a couple of big um, work deadlines due tomorrow, so I figure I'll just take some half an hour out and, and watch it at work um, and just really put myself <laughs> under the pump. Yeah. Um, so you know, do your best work, is it? Yeah, pretty much. I didn't want to waste it, you know, home time when I could be could be um, watching it at work. So. <laughs> Um, no, that wasn't the plan, but I saw it now available online, so I'll, I'll get to that as soon as possible, so I'll let you guys uh, take over. Yeah, you be quiet now. Let's, uh, let's leave it to the people who actually did watch it. Mm, the true supporters. Yeah, that's it, it, yeah. You go back and read the Collingwood board or whatever you were doing instead of watching it. <laughs> 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 All right, come on. What do we think? Come on, who cried? Come on, put your... I can't be the only one who cried, you guys. You're not, you're not a webcam. Put your hand up. Did, did you cry? Totally cried. I cried like a little baby. Yeah, it was beautiful. Especially when, oh my god, every time I see that Jack Silvani, like fifty three Jack Silvani, and to see him just, oh my god, I'm gonna cry now. To see him so overcome by emotion just yeah. pushed me over the edge. Like it's in his blood, just like more so than even than it's in our blood. So. Far out, it was gorgeous, just gorgeous. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to sort of pick sort of a highlight out of the half an hour that it was on. I just it was amazing from sort of start to finish, and you know, even I had a quick look around a few other boards after it had finished, and you know, even sort of Adelaide supporters, Hawthorne supporters, there was, there was quite a few that were giving us some positive feedback. So. Uh, look, we, we, we've definitely picked the right coach in Bolton and, uh, you know, if, if his uh, sort of passion for the game rubs off on, rubs off on the players, you know, we're, we're definitely in good hands. Um, I've, I've IQ'd it and definitely going to watch it a, a couple more times. So fantastic fight by the club. Probably there were some really um, important messages as well that, that I don't know if I picked up on them, but they were pretty obvious. But even at the, at the very start when he said... Um, I work for Carlton Footy Club, or I am Carlton Footy Club, yep. and then it, it panned to a shot of John Barker, and someone mentioned it on the board. I'm not sure who it was, but they said, you know, in that moment it looked like Barker would run through a brick wall for Bolton. So for him to be able to come in from basically off the street compared to where John Barker was and, and get him on board with his message so wholly is, is um, pretty impressive, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'd, uh, obviously we'd seen the Silvani moment before and had a few interviews around that and some of the tears. There's a little bit more showing on the journey. But so with that in mind, my standout moment was probably post-draft um, seeing Jacob Weedering tracing and rubbing the CFC monogram on his jumper like he, he wanted to feel like what it was like to be a blue bagger. He, he was he was almost he was just already proud of the jumper and already embracing the heritage. Um, that I was... thought he had gas to be honest with you. <laughs> don't, don't ruin what is a really nice moment, thank you. Well, I wonder what he was doing and then someone else said that went, Oh yeah, I suppose that's possible. It's like he was in awe of the moment, like he was just soaking it all in and you look at someone like is it Darcy is Parrish, is that his name? For Essendon who just sat there like, Oh my life is fing over now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I agree, Odie, and I think that was a really nice moment as well. It was that was quite emotional too, and also on the back of the, the boat. Um, that we're spoiling all of this for Ferris, but suffering your jocks, you should have watched it. Um, when they, when, who was it? Was it Mackay? Mac- Mac- didn't bring his football. Kerno yeah. didn't bring his football. He uh, they, uh, when he did a run up. <laughs> 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 oh, he's never going to be able to live that down. But um, and then you know the one in all in it, and to see like they were answering Bolton's questions, like yeah, we made fun of them, we had a bit of a laugh, it, and then finally it kind of clicked for them, and it dawned on them like, oh right, okay, so we're all on the same page here. It was, it, you could actually see see the impact that okay. he was having in the moment. They were all thinking the same thing. Thanks. What, Charlie? No. I know. I just had to jump in in their jocks. And I'm, oh, the poor things. But, 
Never mind, they, they'll uh, remember their footies now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, one more thing, um, sorry to completely dominate the conversation. No, good. I'm very talkative. Um, when they were sitting in the kind of the lecture room um, and Bolton asked Jamo, um, he's played 148 games or something and Dylan Viojo Rainbow's played zero. If Dylan gets the structures down pat, um, would Jamo be comfortable with him telling him where to go? And Jamo said, absolutely, I'd expect it. And that kind of set the tone, I think. Well, it shows that the young guys that are in the side don't have to sit by and blindly follow the, follow the example mm. of the older guys. So it, it's, it, it's going to be up to all 22 out on the field at a given moment to to be backing each other up and helping each other out and pointing things out. And if you just sit there and go, oh, yeah, I'm not going to tell him because he's a bigger star than I am, um, it's going to break down. So it's, it's, it, it's such a simple but important message because eager... Ego it probably gets in the way of too many things, and it probably has at our club in the past. Mm. And, and you do hear about that. You do hear about players going in. Um, I, I guess senior cores being more clicky, and the younger guys, you know, finding it hard to break in. You know, we're we talking about the big footy board or the team here. <laughs> uh, well, big, you know, I wouldn't know about the big footy. Um, Blues, clicks. Depends who you ask, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Um, See, can I, can I, those clicks are secret, I, by the way. Don't, don't, don't reveal them all on the podcast. Thanks. Um, can I just say, uh, look, obviously I didn't see it, but I, I, there was a bit of a discussion breaking out about, um, a couple of weeks ago uh, about Bolton. And, and, you know, right now it would be nice if we could get a coach that was brilliant at tactics and a coach that was, you know, brilliant at game plan and, and all that kind of stuff. But I, I made a comment that right now... I don't really give the stuff about that. I just want someone that can bring the team together. I think we've had that the senior players. Some we've, I think we've had a number of lazy players. I don't know if we've been. We definitely haven't been the fittest team. We definitely haven't been the most um, committed, hardworking, cohesive. And I, I haven't seen the doco yet, obviously. But hearing everyone, and I spoke to Brendan Bolton, and I'm um, just sort of seeing the vibe around the club is that. All the cliches of United and reset, it just feels, it actually feels real. And I don't normally get sucked into all the media messages, but it, it feels like everyone is working together. And that is by far the most important thing to get this team doing this year. Forget, I mean, structures are important, but that'll come. Um, just get everyone on the same page. And, and that's what I want out of this year. And it sounds like we're getting there. It's funny you say that because it, Another thing that I picked up on, and Blue Esk has mentioned it a couple of times on the board, is that he spoke to them about becoming well-rounded individual men who are engaged with society. Um, and you guys probably never watched it, but I did. There was a show that used to be on called Wag Nation, and Jared Wake's wife was on it. This has a point, I promise. Um, and every time it showed her at home, Jared Wake was sitting on the couch playing Xbox, literally every time, and she would complain about how she was trying to get ready for a party at their house, and he was just sitting there playing Xbox all day. And Bolton actually made a point of saying, on your day off, you are not to spend the day playing Xbox. That doesn't make you a better person. Get out and about, do a yeah. trade, engage study, in help. Life. Yeah, engage in life and become a human man that's well-rounded and contributes to society, not just a, a dumb footballer kind of thing. So, yeah. um, help your parents out at Christmas too. That was the other Help one. your parents out at Christmas. <laughs> and I, and and I, I want to know if they did. I want yeah. to hear, I want to see the other side of that. <laughs> they have to do a follow-up documentary and say follow Crips at Christmas or something. But, um, yeah, I think you're right, Ferris. Like, because he's a teacher maybe, and I don't know if it's him or his teaching background, but he's actually... Um, focusing on things other than just football, and I think that's really healthy. It's probably no coincidence that another Carlton coach who was yeah. a teacher in David Park, uh, and he yeah. also wanted the players to do something away from footy as well. So I think it probably is his teaching background. Um, I mean, who wants to who wants to sit on their ass all day and and you know play play Xbox or whatever? But yeah, no, that that was a very good message that. Um, that, that he wanted the players to be engaged in society. And the fact that he mentioned Dennis Armfield winning the Jim Steins Award sort of really rammed that point home, I think. So we're yeah. definitely in the hands. Yeah, and, and then the, the, the overwhelming support for um, for Murph and, and Timo mm-hmm. as, as leaders of the club, that was another good thing to hear. Um, it's so, and, and just the, the general outlook, the, the sort of conclusion coming out of that, uh, that whole thing is opposition players who watch that I probably, you know, some of them are going to go, wow, how good would he be to play for? And, yeah. and, and even though we're down the bottom of the ladder, uh, it's a, it's a fantastic 
marketing tool for our club and selling where we're going and selling our coaching and stuff. And I don't, I don't think players are going to be going, oh god, they're all a bunch of losers. They're not going to look at that and go, Carlton, are, Carlton are terrible. They're going to say Carlton are on the way up. But realistically, you only really need to screen that doco into Western Sydney though, because that's <laughs> really the only team we're going to get players from. <laughs> well, you know, Tom was saying we could get you can try and get and next year, whatever. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Um, Maybe it needs to be screened on the Gold Coast as well, Ferris. Oh, yes. I like it. Just briefly before we go, folks, let's just touch on our round one game uh, versus the Tiggers, uh, which is uh, 7.20 p.m. March 24 at the MCG. Um, Our traditional season opener. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot expected. At this stage, we're paying $4.15 on the betting sites. And incidentally, Carlton have uh, ended all their association with betting sites. That's another little aside. But um, and Richmond have 123. So obviously, we're expected to, to lose that game. However, um, just what we saw from Richmond uh, in the NAB Challenge and what we saw from Carlton... Um, I, I, I don't know. I think I think it's going to be a little bit closer than, uh, than people think. Um who do you think might come in for that? We've got, we've got Murphy coming in. Any other changes from the Sydney NAB Challenge game? Uh, maybe Tut and maybe Byrne would be the two for me. Maybe Tut as a for in the forward line and Byrne off half back. I, I, off the top of my head, I can't sort of think of anyone else. But um, it's going to be an interesting week at uh, around the selection table. I think. Well, yes, remember. Uh, Two there's players two extra, have to, there's two yeah. extra to drop um, from That's the extended right. squad from Sydney, I believe. So um, even just bringing in Murphy means three out. So you'd think there probably wouldn't be more than, you know, maybe more than two ins. Yeah, uh, well done to Byrne, by the way, who's our nominated rookie this year. So honestly, I think I think Thomas, with his suspension, might um, see Byrne come in as a bit of a like-for-like replacement for at least someone who can play across a half-back flank, bit of speed. Um, that sort of thing. So I'm not too sure on the rest of the changes. Um, it'd be really interesting to see if, if Charlie Kerno gets a gig up forward. Mm. Um, but as, as you said, Odeon, I don't think we're going to be that far off the pace that it's just a, an absolute uh, drubbing at all. I think there'll be periods there where we're actually uh, controlling the game. Ultimately, I think Richmond will win, but we should be pretty competitive throughout the whole thing. Yeah. It, 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 for me, it's just the only changes should be based around getting that forward structure a little bit more right, and it may just be, you know, the, the, the likes of Jack maybe coming in or Kerno coming in uh, to achieve that. But um, yeah, we, it's it's hard to know who's going to go out. We can't. I can see Gorringe going out. Definitely, he didn't do much. Mm. Um, I think Everett will be given a reprieve. I thought his intensity was very low. So, but he, but his, uh, we know what he's like in the home and away. He'll switch on. Um, and it's hard to know how Andrew Walk is travelling. He kind of looked like he was still injured out there. So, um, but um, you know, and he's getting old. So, uh, it'd be interesting. But there won't be too many changes. That was a real look at our likely round twenty-two side against Sydney. So, um, match up wise, uh, who do we see? I mean, the, the Richmond forward structure with. Um, Vickery and Rewald. Do we see Wiedering playing on one of those, or just Jamo and Rowe taking them? They'll probably switch around a little bit, as as does happen in games and stuff. But I think primarily it'll be Jamo and 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 Rowe on those two, with Wiedering sort of taking the third tall, or you know, depending on how the press is going, falling back and you know having to look after one of them, I suppose. But yeah, um, I yeah. think um, I think you're right where you said that Gorringe might come out. Um, and, but that, that's the other thing that's going to be interesting to me is if Wright and Lamb play in that same side as well to get our forward pressure up and try and keep it locked into Richmond's defensive 50. Yeah, and midfield-wise, um, we stack up fairly well, do you think? Or who's got the advantage there? No, I think I, it's pretty 50-50, isn't it? Yeah, I think so as well. I think uh, Kerno will take Cochin, as he has done previously. And I think other than that, I think we'll probably go head-to-head. You know, you look at it and it's, you know, Cruiser, Murphy, Gibbs... Cripps, Kerridge, Nicky Graham against Marek, Cochin, Martin, Edwards if he plays, a few others. So I, I think we stack up okay in, in the midfield. So it's obviously four to centre that, that hurts us. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty much 50-50 in the forward line. We're going to have to be fairly smart entering 50 because um, obviously the, the Richmond have got probably 
the most in form tall defender in the competition in Rance. Um, so kicking along into our forward line as we traditionally have done is not going to help us at all. So we're going to be relying on those midfielders streaming inside 50 and finding space um, for, for, for maybe some shorter kicks. Um, yeah, we definitely have to keep it away from Rance. So that's- m- Maybe that's what we're maybe that's what we're going for. I mean, Rance is obviously you know probably the premier uh, key defender in the league, and we don't have any tall forwards for him to take. So uh, you know, play around him. Yeah, I think it'll just make him confused, and he'll just lie <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's been uh, there's been some varying reports as to whether Chris Yaron will leave the buffet and make it for round one. <laughs> I'm um, very sure. Oh, very <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I, I I think we're entitled. I think Carlton have caught a lot of blame for for Yaron's um, shape um, and form at this early stage, and then talked about them I, having to. I, am I shape you mean, you mean circle? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. so Carlton, have got, we have to decartonise them, and you know Carlton sort of play play them overweight and stuff like that. And now we need some decent fitness people to actually get them back. And Yaron used to be in, in pretty good shape. It wasn't. It was only when he lost interest mid year that he started to balloon out, and you could really tell. Like oh. so, so you know, I I I blame Richmond for the whole lot. <laughs> and and if, if it's not their fault, then it is. <laughs> That's fair. That's how it works. Yeah, but um, and there's a few people naming him in their 22s and a few people not, so it's going to be very interesting to see whether he makes it because they're really relying on him to... Um, um, their ball movement's been pretty slow and they're really relying on him to uh, to sort of come into that modern age with a quicker ball movement through the middle, so like he did for us at different mm-hmm. times. So um, it would be interesting. I don't know that he's going to be in great form early in the season at least. So, um, predictions. How do we think we're going to go? Who's uh, who's going to win by how much? Oh, look, as much as I'd love to say Carlton, I think Richmond by five goals. Ah. Yeah, no, that's uh, it's too much. I was going to say Richmond by twenty-eight points. Way, way oh. too pessimistic there, Shan. You pigs! That was HBF two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I'm actually going to be worse. I'll go six goals to Richmond. God, okay, you bunch of jets. I'm going to say Carlton by four points and lots of Richmond tears <laughs> that I will bathe in. <laughs> I, I think we'd be more more worried about a, a Noah's Ark kind of scenario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so many unknowns to this side. I um, mean, generally, when you get your hopes up, um, they come out on the field and uh, all those hopes are rudely cast aside within within moments. But, um, you know, we've, said, we've, we've come close to Richmond. Even last year when we were terrible, we sort of stayed within five goals of them. And um, um, I think we're going to have a lot more intensity. And I don't think they like the, the rough stuff too much. Uh, I know they've brought in Townsend. But I think um, we're going to be pretty fierce and ferocious. And, um, yeah, why not? It's, it's the first game of the season. Um, Carlton are going to pull off a major upset and uh, and start the year off on a good note. And you know yeah. what, the pressure's, the pressure's all on them too because yeah. no one expects us to win a thing and that's probably when they're going to crumble. Yeah, they're shit at pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited, you guys. Oh. <laughs> Actually, just thinking we, we, we all should come out in Gold Coast jumpers uh, round one. There's no way they'll beat us. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh. That's hey. bitchy too. That is super bitchy. And the other, and, and the other thing to note from that from that Sydney Net Challenge game was um, Kerno keeping Kennedy very quiet. Um, and as I said, he, he stepped up not only in his tagging but also in getting the ball himself and actually using it. So um, I, I think um, he'll go to um, probably Cochin, I'd guess. Um, and um, yeah, now we know he's going to disappear. Put him on someone else. Delidio. No, nah, someone good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, the blue bag of spirit is back. The swag is back, folks. We're gonna, yeah! gonna have a good year. Go, you mighty blues. <laughs> good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.